Good afternoon and welcome to the, what month is it? The August edition of the Marks Group Goldmine Tips and Tricks webinars. We put on these Tips and Tricks webinars once a month. You can always visit our Tips and Tricks from ages past by heading on over to www.marksgroup.net. What are we talking about today? Let's see if we can't get a, there we go. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about recently used contacts and how to get that list to be a little longer than as is out of the box, which I find to be very frustrating and certainly not useful. We're going to look at the quickest way to search in gold mine, the absolute fastest way to search for people in gold mine. You understand that when you're working in gold mine, we always have to find the guy. That's what I tell my students all the time. We have to find that guy. And finding that guy can be a real pain in the ass when you're on the phone with somebody else. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that humanly possible in gold mines. And we're going to have some changing alarms. I mean, by which I mean changing the alarm behavior. Not that I see a lot of alarms used anymore in the field, but I thought you guys might like to know how to stop them from pestering you every, every 30 seconds or what have you. Let's jump right into some gold mine. Let's see if we can't do that much. Ah, recently used contacts. Oh, this camera is killing me today. Okay, that'll work. Oh, the first thing I have to do is clean up my willy-nilly windows here in gold mine. How do we do that? Ever see this happen in gold mine? All of your windows are just everywhere. Just all messy. Oh, absolutely awful. What you have to do here is just maximize any one of them. Could be that one. Could be this one, could be this one back here. It doesn't matter. We just maximize any window, and we're back to our good old tabbed interface. Ah, all is right with the world. If you ever care to get it back to those messy child windows again, all you have to do is just click that little guy here. You know, little guy, that little tab with the four square guy on it there. Yeah, we click that, and we're back to child windows. And we're going to go back to our tabs, and now we're going to do a little Watusi. Okay. Recently used contacts. What do I mean? I mean that when I'm actually on the contact tab here, I have this beautiful, oh so very thoughtful list of most recently used contacts. And this works as you imagine that it might. As I singly click on each contact here, I actually navigate to that contact uh, in the contact pane. Some of you may be wondering why my most recently used contact list is only, I don't know, what, what nine or ten <clears throat> items long. And that is because out of the box, the recently used contacts only let you list a handful. I have mine pumped up to 99. Yeah, you bet, baby. We're master users over here in this gold mine. Let me show you how to do that on your own. You're going to go to your tools, on to your options. Tools options, always a fun place to be. And you're going to go to oh, boom, 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 boom. System, the System tab. And what you want to do is pump up that recent items shown number all the way. Oh, they allow 100 nowadays? Oh, it used to be 99. Oh, life is good. I'm going to set that to 100. But 100 is the maximum. And what you'll have to do, oh, let me do that. Yes, it does. And if and when you do that, it's going to make you log back into Goldmine. And if you're presenting to anybody, they won't be able to see that part. It's coming back. Bear with me. Oh, wrong password. Come on. There we go. There we go. So now we're going to have a nice long list. A nice long list of recently viewed contacts. Oh my goodness. That help index still broken? Yeah, you bet it is. Ah, uh, we'll fix that someday. So I find the most recently viewed contacts to be extremely useful, especially at the end of the day, or, or <laughs> more to the point, every Monday morning when I go to submit my invoice to Gene Marks of the Marks Group. Uh, the, the most recently used contact list lets me see at a glance who I've been talking with this week, who I've been touching, who have I completed histories against, who have I scheduled things against, things of that nature. Um, very, very, very useful. We were so happy to see this recently viewed contacts list uh, appear in the gold mine. Um, I'm going to say maybe 
Mm, maybe could have been 10 years ago now. Oh my God, I feel old. Didn't always used to be there. Now it is here. We love it. So put up that number. Again, that's going to be tools, options, system, and all the way up to 100 recent items shown. All right. Quick search. How to quickly search. Okay, so in gold mine, there's three things that we're typically doing in gold mine. Like the, the, the terrible tripod of gold mine, whatever. We have searching. Completing and scheduling. Searching, completing, and scheduling. Maybe not in that order. So searching, completing, and scheduling. Did I just say that? So searching, scheduling, and completing. Anyway, those are the three things we're always doing in gold mine. So virtually anything that we do in gold mine is going to happen against the guy. I guess that's not politically correct nowadays. The person. We gotta find the person. We gotta find the, we gotta find that that person in gold mine. So when we search for people in Goldmine, we're going to actually be doing that a lot, a lot, a lot. So the way we search in Goldmine, of course, is we use the search button here. Uh -huh. And now we're in our search pane, our search tab, rather. And from here, we can, oh, I don't know, we can, oh, we can drop that list down and we can search for, you know, whatever Goldmine field we'd like to. So maybe we want to search for city. And maybe we want it to begin with, and maybe we want it to begin with Baldwinsville, my hometown in New York. I guess there's nobody in here with that. <laughs> that moment when your search isn't working. Oh my God. Let's start it simple. All right, so we're going to search just for a simple company name. So, pardon me. The search center works as if you might expect it to. We have a search by, an equal to, or not equal to, a greater than, a less than, so on and so forth. The operand or the operator. I can't remember which one that is, operand or operator. The marks group being our search string. So the search center works as you might expect it to. Now. All that crap you had to go through to get here, to go to the search center, to actually click your button. Mm -hmm. And then, oh God, this list. This list here. Let's just take a moment to all pause and lament upon the length of the list of field names here in the search center. This is patently ridiculous. Anyone who wants to search through this list is deranged. Anybody who needs to search through this list is having a terrible day. How do I know that? Because I do it all day, every day. So the easiest way to select a field from here is to not do it from here. The easiest way to, so to actually select a field from this drop-down is to do it from the contact record. How do we do that? <clears throat> this is awesome. If I want to search for a field on the contact record, all I have to do is double-click the field name, not the field value, not like in here, right? The field name. So as I click a field name here, or, or more precisely, a field label, it, it throws me to the search center, and it throws me searching by that field name. Oh, my goodness, there is light at the end of this searching tunnel. Yes, no longer will you have to navigate the tumultuous ocean of crap, which is this field list. Oh my God, get it out, kill it with fire. Whereas normal people, smart people, beautiful people like you and me will search from the contact record itself here, right from here. So I'm gonna search by say last name. I double click on the word last. I'm searching by last, oh my goodness. And this also works down in my fields tab. So if you guys have a lot of stuff going on here, in the fields tab, like I do, um, I guess maybe I got a lot going on, man. You bet. Maybe not so much. But right from here, same rules apply. I want to search by this interest confirmed date. Seems to be a date. It is a date. I'm going to double click on the field label. And ba bam, I'm already searching. So what this will allow you to be able to do is easily, and, and emphasis on easy, I'm at a point in my life where easy is good. Yes, easy is good easily search the gold mine database for any field on the contact record. 
you no longer have to scroll through this list. Now, the real problem with this list, you know, I, I joke because I love you gold mine so much. The, the, the real problem with this list is that if somebody creates a field in here and doesn't fill out the label just right, the label isn't visible in here. So what you're going to get is just a bunch of these, like, you training, you test, you test two, you step, you step four. You won't actually get the field label. You'll just get the, the back end user defined uh, actual database column name. And it's not always obvious what field you're after. So instead of having to screw around in here, again, go right to your fields tab, search right from here. Proposal submitted. I think that's a P that should be in there. I'm missing a P. I'm going to double click there. And there. Searching by proposal submitted. This is a really nice shortcut to use because again, everything you, that you do in Goldmine is typically uh, married to the current contact record, the person, the guy. You know, we got to find that guy. Okay. Uh, incidentally, a couple of things that you can do here in the search center. Don't forget. Don't ever forget that you can add levels to your search here by using our handy dandy plus and minus buttons over here. Oh my goodness. This is like one of the best kept secrets of gold mine. So you you know what's going on here, right? I can actually compound my search to be a compound search. So not only do I want maybe proposal submitted is equal to uh, is greater than January 1st. Maybe I also want the source to be, oh, I don't know, internet. Sounds very vaguely amusing. And maybe I want my title to be the I only want to talk to the big bosses. Wouldn't life be grand? At any rate, you get the idea that when I compound or I add levels to my search here, it compounds the search criteria. Um, this is incidentally, oh, well, we're here. Let's, let's take it all the way home, baby. Well, you're here. This is incidentally the best way to create a filter, and I mean the best way. Anyone who's created a filter, like back in the old days where we were like riding horses by gaslight, um, it was awful. Oh, I won't even show you how awful it was because you'd just fall over dead. But creating filters used to be a real pain in the ass. Now it is just like every heaven here in our search center. So right here I've, I've created this three-level search. So I have my proposal submitted, my source, and my title all just the way I like them. And I'm going to save this as a filter. I can do it right from here. What is that save button doing here? It's going to do this. We're going to click on that save button. And we're going to save that as a filter. Oh, my God. Look at that. I'm not sure if you can see this. Yeah, you should be able to see that. I'm going to call this um, Big Bosses from the Internet. be a B movie. But incidentally, this is how you actually create new filters uh, in the new and improved gold mine. If you want to see them filters right from your search center, how do we do that? Seems like we should be able to do that. If I click this filters groups button here, oh my god, search center is becoming ultra mega super duper awesome. It's like a transformer. It keeps on folding it parts out of itself. I just can't keep track of everything. Michael Bay, save us. At any rate. Our filters here are all listed. Nice, nice. Same alongside of our groups. Beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> if I want to look at the filters or groups from other people, I can simply click here and select that other person thusly. Look at that. Beautiful. Little yellow different. I love it. Okay, let us move on to changing alarm behavior. What do I mean by alarms? Well, we all know gold mine alarms, right? Oh, boy, golly, Bob, how do, do we know alarms in gold mine? So what do I mean? For those of you who might be not marred and ruined by the world of gold mine alarms just yet. Wait, your turn's coming. You bet. Here it comes right now. If I schedule a thing against a someone, My initial meeting, I give it some silly little notes. 
I'm going to give you a date. I'm going to actually make this yesterday. I want to I pretend that I missed this thing. Time is going to be 8A. Did you know that when you're scheduling things in here, 8A is for 8 a.m.? Or 7P is for 7 p.m. Look at that. I'm just I'm all I'm doing is I'm hitting the tab key to tap tab out of that field and actually commit the value uh, to what it should be or what Goldmine thinks it should be. Or 14 is two for those military buffs out there. Same thing with 17 would be five. The happiest time of every day. I'm sure it's 17 somewhere right now. As a matter of fact, let's schedule this for 8A. Uh, duration really, eh. Who cares? What we care about here is the alarm. So if you're alarming things, the alarm will schedule itself for, by default, 10 minutes before the scheduled event. So what does this do for us? I'm going to schedule that guy, and there we go. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. Now nah, you should be able to see that now. God, I hope you guys can see that. But this is a gold mine alarm. This will come up when alarms are enabled, and it will bother you, and it will haunt you until the end of your life, and you will be on your deathbed, and you will wonder why, why, why the, the, the gold mine alarms always followed me this far into the plot. What we want to do is want to explain that when you alarm everything, they're useless. So what I often see in the field is people will alarm absolutely everything because, well, you know, everything, I guess, kind of is important, but maybe, like, you know, like that pig farm, some things are more important than others. You can get that reference. I love it. So when you alarm everything, nothing is important. So what we often see in the field, oh, God, I see this all the time, is that when, when end users' alarms come up, you'll just hit that suspend alarms. Oh, that seductive, luscious suspend alarms button. I love it because what that does is that will, it makes it all go away. Oh, my God, it all went away. And it all goes away until the next time you actually restart Goldmine, which is the real danger. So you end up missing things. So now I have to restart my Goldmine. Oh, this mouse. Oh, come to Seattle, where allergy shuffers go to die. Oh, Lordy Lou. There's, there's, there's a sheen, a film of pollen on my car out front right now. You wouldn't believe it. Okay. That would be the wrong screen, Justin. All right, so we're going to get that alarm back. So when I, when I suspend my alarms, uh, they go away. They, they don't come up anymore until I restart my gold mine. Now, now this is nice if you say like you're opening your gold mine stand on a weekend or uh, after business hours, or what have you. Come on there, Alarm, what are you doing to me? You're killing me. Honest to God, there we go, honest to God. Suspending alarms only suspends them for the current uh, gold mine session. Let me go ahead and pop the more in here. We're actually getting to the point, I swear to goodness. Oh, there we go. Doo, 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 doo. There we go. Lovely, lovely. All right, so now I have a couple of alarms. So a lot of things that we can do here other than <laughs> suspend alarms. Again, suspending alarms is great if you don't want to deal with that at all, ever. Because you will forget it. You will forget that it's in there. But what can we do from here? Once we pop that alarm, these are called screen pops in the industry, by the way. Always reminded me of Cocoa Pops. Is it Cocoa Pops? No, it's called Puffs. What am I thinking about? God, I'm off today. I'm really off. If we snooze this alarm, this will make just this alarm. Now, keep in mind that when I have multiples here, it will make just that alarm go away for a predetermined snooze interval. I believe the default is maybe a couple of minutes or so. Ignore means I just want to ignore just that one alarm. Suspend alarms, we know what that's all about. And we can show or hide the notes of our actual scheduled item. Those are our silly little notes right there. 
Right from here, though, there's a lot of other things that we can do that people never seem to really care about. Right from here, if I mean, if this alarm just is not applicable any longer, just delete it. Instead of suspending all of your alarms, just delete that alarm. If you know you're never going to do that thing, <laughs> story of my life, uh, just delete that alarm like that. All selected alarms. I do. Look at that. One alarm left. All right. Now, from here, you could complete it. And, of course, everything that is scheduled in Goldmine, everything that is scheduled to happen in Goldmine needs to or wants to be completed in the history. Yes. Oh, God, in the history. Not that notes tab. Never the notes tab. Just, ooh, get your hand away from that notes tab. And step your hand away from that notes tab. Use history. Complete in the history. That's going back to last week's training or last month's training, rather. You can find that on our YouTube channel. But again, back to the issue at hand, if I want to complete this item from here, I can. If I want to view that contact, I can. So again, my advice to you is going to be only alarm the things that are really important. Because when everything is alarmed, nothing is important. It gets lost in the noise. Now let's see if we can screw around with how these alarms deal with themselves. All right, so I'm going to go to Tools Options. Again, Tools Options. When I say it's a nice place to be, I'm not being flippant or yokose. I'm saying this is a nice place to be as a gold mine user. Check it out. Tool around in here. See what's going on. See what's available. Take stock. Think about your life. So from here, <laughs> if I go to the alarms tab, I can actually change some things about how the alarms are dealing, uh, how the alarms are happening in gold mine. So let me get my glasses cleaned off. Oh boy. Back in my day. Okay, so alarms can actually be disabled altogether. If you really want to go that far, let's not worry about that. But your pop-up alarms here, this is, this is going to get you your, your pop alarms. You can scan for alarms every so on and so forth. Your default lead time, again, it can be 10 minutes or it can be, say, 30 minutes. That's, again, how, how much in front of the scheduled item your alarm will happen. You can use, instead of a pop-up alarm, you can use this taskbar notification. And that what that is, is that's a little guy that appears in your sys tray down in the, on the lower right-hand corner of your gold mine. Of your gold mine. Of your windows, I mean. Of your gold mine. How silly. <clears throat> I wouldn't really recommend the taskbar. I would re recommend the pop-up alarm system. When you ignore the alarms, that's an, actually an auto-snooze for however long you want this to be. Is three minutes long enough? In... I'm thinking 15 is more appropriate there. If you have, there's these things in the world that used to be called pagers, right? And they used to be things that people would put on their belts. And every once in a while, the pagers would summon them to actually use a telephone to call somewhere. So if you have one of these ancient mystical devices called a pager, you can use this to page yourself. I'm not sure what those are. We'll have to, like, consult the emerald tablets of Thoth, maybe. If you want to play an alarm sound file, when you uh, get an alarm pop in your gold mine, you can do so here. You can browse out to your little song or whatever. I used to have the um, literally the uh, Batman theme song, MP3, uh, connected to my uh, to my alarms. It's a long story, but a fun one. I'll tell it someday. And we can also do this thing called uh, gold alarm. Uh, for those of you that haven't been using gold mine for the last 25 or 30 years, gold alarm is a nice little way to, when you're not running gold mine, to actually still pull or, or, or look at gold mine alarms. And what it does is it runs this little gold alarm icon on your little uh, system tray by, by on the lower right-hand side by your clock in Windows. Again, not a lot to play with here, but what you might want to do is... Um, change that ignore interval to be a little more useful in three minutes. I mean, God, I can't get it from here to the kitchen in three minutes, honestly. So pump it up to 15, change your lead time, so on and so forth. Alarms are fun, kids. But again, if you alarm everything, nothing is special. And I think we all want to be special, don't we really? And with that being said, I have to move on over for the next uh, webinar. So please feel free to email me at justin at marksgroup.net. I'm always looking for those next batch of tips and tricks. What do you love? What do you hate? What would you like to see? What would you like to never see again? Please let me know. And with that, 
I bid you adieu.